say hello, Nigeria. Now it's time for our very first guest in the studio. Today is a very, very important day. And this conversation is very important because at the end of the day, we find that more and more people are doing business. We're seeing more entrepreneurs springing up every day. And one of the most important things that would ensure that you keep remaining in business is the fact that you can offer value to your customers. Today, we're looking at creating instant value in a digital world. And who better to have this conversation with? Our guest today is not just a bespoke shoemaker. He is also a writer, a public speaker, and a serial entrepreneur. His name is Sheung David Onamusi, and he is going to be having this conversation with me. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me again. Every time Thank you come, you, so you always much. come with pink shoes. So I was just looking out <laughs> for your shoes today. And these are definitely your shoes yes. as well. Yes, they are. Interesting. Yes, they are. How's business going? Good, good. It's been an exciting... We launched about two two years ago or so in London, and it's it's been an exciting journey so far. Brilliant. Yeah. You launched in London. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you also have an extension in Nigeria? So well? we have a lot of clientele here in, in Nigeria. Um, I come from time to time to take measurements because this bespoke is 100% handmade. So we I come to Nigeria, take measurements of my customers, go back and deliver. So we can deliver in Nigeria, but at the moment... We don't have a physical store in Nigeria. All right. Yeah. Why, why I'm asking this is because yeah. of the conversation we're having. We're talking yeah. about creating an instant, uh, creating instant value in a digital world. Yeah, and we sure. find that a lot of the time we're preaching by Nigeria, by the Naira to yeah. grow the Naira. But we find that a lot of entrepreneurs and young business persons complain. They find that they face more challenges trying to start up a business yeah. here in Nigeria. And at yeah. the end of the day, we find that when you measure some of the Nigerian made products, mm -hmm. they're even more expensive mm -hmm. than the ones you buy. So you find people saying, instead of me buying this Nigerian product that would cost me more, I'll just buy one from yep. another foreign yeah. brand. Why is this yeah. so? Um, I think before I answer that, let me even also add that the world is global. The world is digital in nature. We can't stop everybody that wants to buy outside Nigeria. Um, most of my customers come from the digital sphere in that sense. So um, in terms of quality, in terms of customer service, all those things are very, very important when it comes to Made in Nigeria. I did uh, do some samples when I was going to launch in Nigeria. I made some Made in Nigeria shoes. But compared to the quality at the time, they couldn't meet up with production on a regular basis. Of course, there were some one-off pieces. They were fantastic. They were world standard, but continuity is very important. So it's always, there's that challenge of quality and also creating something that is of real authentic value, of global value. Let me put it that way. Interesting. Now, okay, when starting a business or mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur, one of the major things, like I mentioned earlier, is creating value. And mm -hmm. you also need to talk about your relationship with your customers. Absolutely. Actually, how do you even develop a customer base? Okay, good question. Now, when it comes to uh, customer base, I think we must understand that the customer is out there. You know, the customer is readily available. Whether it's someone in your church, someone in your mosque, someone in your house, your friend, they're all potential customers. Potential customers are everywhere that you can. Now, in acquiring those customers, you must, of course, have the product or service that you want to sell to them, but also have what I call an integrated customer journey. What exactly are you trying to get? I know some people sell emails for uh, businesses here in Nigeria, small businesses. You can buy people's email addresses, but that's not enough. Just sending an email blast is not enough. If you want to create instant value, you must have to absolutely start thinking of creating a value chain and understand that the journey must start from somewhere. So, for example, in practical terms, a customer, you send an email to that customer. What is the call to action that you want that customer to do? What are you trying to get that customer to do? Is it go to your website or ask for more information? When you create a journey, you are able to absolutely manage that customer and acquire that customer eventually. If you send the first email when you have an integrated customer journey, if you send the first email and the customer doesn't open it or doesn't take the action, what you then do is a follow-up email that says, okay, this is your last chance to do this. When that customer does that and you've acquired them, that's not when to stop because 70% of your business will profit from repeat customers, not new customers. It costs 10 times more to get a new customer than an old customer. So you can make more money from your old customers. So what that means is you now have to start segmenting those customers, but that's another masterclass for another day. But to answer your question precisely, if you want to acquire a customer, understand the potential that is out there, gather information from people around you because they're always going to patronize you, at least because 
they like you or they like your face or whatever the case is, get their data because data is king in this world. If you don't have data, you can't survive in this world. So you get their data and then you create an integrated customer journey. Before you know it, those customers will be loyal to you. Interesting. Now, you mentioned emails. You mm -hmm. mentioned that there are people that send, sell emails. Now, mm -hmm. I, I understand why I get some random emails from people and okay. I'm wondering, who is this person and how did this person get my email yeah. address and why are they sending yeah. this to me? Yeah. What are the things that a business person should have at the back of their mind when sending that first email to catch the person's attention? Because mm -hmm. if you're like me, in the first few lines, if I don't see how I, I, I know you personally and this email doesn't concern me, I'm moving on to the next email. Yeah. So what are the things that the business person should have at the back of their minds when creating this email to be able to catch the attention of the reader? Okay, good question. Now, I currently consult for a global pharmaceutical company in Israel and they brought me on board to talk about this marketing old stuff. And that was one of the questions the directors asked us and said, okay, you know what? If we, we already send emails, but we want them to take action. We want first 10 seconds, we want them to get it. So to answer your question, the first thing you have to do is personalize the email. So personalize it. Hi, Olive, for example, is not their customer. It's Actually, not those are the ones something... that I, I pay more attention to, the ones that call my name. Exactly. So, hi, Olive, because you feel like, oh, I know you from somewhere, even though they don't know you. And you can do that when you're using all these marketing uh, tools. You can actually uh, personalize what you do, and it's just, just doing a meta tag or whatever it is. It's very simple to do it. So you just say, hi, Olive. That's the first thing. And then in the first sentence, you want to make sure that you're selling value. Okay, it's not just, oh, uh, we are the top this in Nigeria. We are this. No, no, don't sell all of that. People, you're not concerned about what you're doing. Tell me, how does it benefit me? Because the customer is reading and saying to himself or herself, how does this email add to my life? If it does not add to my life, I'm deleting straight away. True. So personalize it and immediately sell something, sell the benefit of what your product is or whatever you're trying to get across with your email address. And lastly, create a very clear call to action. Olive, you have X amount of time to do this. If you don't, you, you miss out. Create that sort of hype to it as well because the customer feels like they're missing out. Everybody's afraid of missing out on something good. Very true. Now let's talk about, um, you, you may mention the fact that it's a lot easier to get an old customer to come back mm -hmm. than it is to get a new customer and that 70% of the profit one makes or so is mm -hmm. from the old customers mm -hmm. and not the new customers. Mm -hmm. How can you keep an old customer to keep coming? How can you make them come back over and over again? Yeah, so it's understanding that customer, understanding what makes them buy. The first time when they buy, you want to ask them a feedback and ask, okay, what made you come to us? Where did you hear about us? Because uh, and let me actually digress a little bit. I was on a flight back from uh, Abuja yesterday, and Dana Air did something, and this is not an advertisement for them, but I quite liked it. For the first time flying a Nigerian airplane, I've only seen for the first time, they said, here's a feedback form, please tell us how we did today. That's because my assumption is that their team is starting to think that, okay, Sheung has flown us today. We want to know why and what will make him come back again. So get feedback from your customer and say, okay, what have you, you know, what have we done? How have we done in your own rating? You can do that with your Google page. When you have a Google page, your, your uh, Facebook page, ask customers for reviews because those are feedbacks. Once you get that feedback, you understand what is important to them. And then you sell that thing back to them as well. So if a customer likes your customer service, you know every time you deal with that customer, you have to exceed the previous customer service. Like me. Exactly. <laughs> Some customers are like, you know what I like is competitive. The price is good. You know what? Send deals to such a customer because such a customer is price sensitive. They're always thinking about the best I feel price. that I'm more of a customer service person because if I come to your store mm -hmm. and you sell something for me way cheaper but you have a terrible approach, I would go to five stores after that. I would spend more money getting to just to get that product because they would treat me better. And I, that's because of the kind of value I also give mm -hmm, to people as mm -hmm. well. Ironically, that's the case for seven out of ten people in the world. And that's why uh, companies who are on the edge of customer service, who understand that customer service is extremely important. They last longer in the business. 
they last longer and their, their cash or their bank is more profitable. They're richer in terms of the money in the bank that they have. So now let's talk about this customer service. It does seem that as Nigerians, I don't think we're that much of a service-oriented or a service-driven country. We find that every day, you must, at least every, every week, you would experience bad customer service in mm -hmm. Nigeria. Some people are starting to understand how important customer service is. But well, how can we move on from here? As entrepreneurs, business owners, employees as well, what can we do differently to improve our customer service? So as a business owner, the first thing you want to do is tell your staff, I'm not the person that pays your salary. The customer pays your salary. Because if you don't drive that psyche into the mind of your staff, they will treat your business anyhow. So you want to make sure you make them understand that I'm not the one paying your salary. That customer is the one paying your salary. Because the day the customer stops coming and buying from us is the day I stop having money. And the day I stop having money is the day I can't pay you. And the day I can't pay you is the day I fire you. Simple. So it's a circle. You make them understand that the customer is the one that pays their salary. That's the first thing. Because everybody's salary driven. Everybody's thinking, as long as I get my paycheck at the end of the month, they don't care whatever you do. No, that's not the case. You make them understand that I'm tying your salary to that level of customer service. Another thing you can do as a business owner is conduct regular mystery shopping into your store. Send your friends to go and find out you know, in your absence and get feedback. Because you must do that. And some people don't get it because now there are more options in Nigeria. More businesses are springing up. I don't have to deal with you anymore. The world is global. I can buy from Amazon. I don't have to go to Conga. I don't have to go to anywhere else. I have options. There's so many options. So if you don't understand that, you will keep begging. You will keep begging the customer. You will keep hoping and praying and fasting and binding and losing when all you're doing is you're frustrating the grace that God has placed on your head, <laughs> you know, in that sense. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that you don't frustrate your business. You want to ensure that you place customer service at the topmost every time, every day. Is the customer always right? In certain schools of businesses, that's a big question now. There's, a, uh, there's, uh, there's another, um, there's a book that I read recently that says you shouldn't listen to your customer all the time. Um, and the customer isn't always right but neither are they always wrong. Because if you don't listen to your customer, you will lose out. So if they're not right, it does not mean that you don't listen to them. Because in the middle of the wrong approach or whatever they've said might be a truth. So I would believe that customer is not always right, but they're neither always wrong. They're people that you must listen to. They're always right based on their own perspective. And as a business owner, you have to listen and understand their perspective. If you just discard them and say they're not always right, well, it's your loss. They'll go somewhere else. Interesting. Now let's talk about um, social media marketing. Mm -hmm. These days we find that lots of people are using social media to become very, very wealthy. We mm -hmm. have the likes of the, the Olori Supergirls mm -hmm. and the Linda Ikejis mm -hmm. who have understood this. And of course, even people like John Obidi that teach social media mm -hmm. marketing. Mm -hmm. How best can one position themselves on social media, themselves and their business as well? So um, I, love, I love the names that you've mentioned, and they've, doing, they've done fantastically well. I, and as a matter of fact, I always say this, that their potential has not been fully tapped because not a lot of them are starting to use analytics to analyze their data and really use that data-centric information to actually drive more revenue for their businesses. But for where they are, they're doing fantastically well, and I congratulate them. Anyone who wants to you know, position themselves in the social media space must understand where do I want to play first. Am I, in essence, if I'm a blogger, for example, what type of blogger am I? Am I a sort of like a educationist, or am I a gossip blogger? You know, there's always value in all of that. What you want to do is understand your target audience and sell to that target audience. Not everybody on social media likes Insta Blog Ninja. It's the honest truth. Not everybody likes Linda Ikeji. It's the honest truth. Some people would rather go to Bella Ninja. Some people would rather go to Diary of a Ninja Girl sure. or go somewhere else that, you know, that person is speaking a lot of English, but they like the English that they are speaking, <laughs> you know? Some people just like, oh, I want to go to funny Nigerian pictures, and they enjoy that. Understand your target audience. That's the first place. Once you understand them and their language, how they speak, and then you relate to them on that front, you're in a better place than most people. 
understanding your tar target audience. Absolutely. Let's speak about data analytics. Mm -hmm. Do you want to give us a, a little more insight into that? Okay, so with data analytics, and, uh, and we know we always say data is king. Um, there's a, there are platforms where you can go and you integrate and get all the customer information that you have. So, for example, when it comes to analytics, some people only think about Google Analytics where they look at how many people have visited their websites, where they visited from, and that's fantastic. And as a matter of fact, what you can do is what they call retargeting. So I go to, how many websites do you go to on a day? Just an average. Mm, say five. Okay, five. Five of those websites, maybe one or two of them are shopping sites. Some of them are information, correct? Yeah. So that's shopping sites, but maybe you don't buy from two, all of them every time you go, okay? Sometimes you just go to look for deals. You just go look for deals, fantastic. When you have a good analytics platform in your business, what you do is every time you've visited, you've left a crumb, what we call a data crumb, on the website. We've seen that Olive has logged in, and this is our IP address. This is our details. What we then do is we retarget, and we, our advertising then puts your IP address and all those details, and then next time you log on, you will see that same pair of shoes that you went to visit yesterday. You see that same pair of shoes saying, buy Hello. me now, buy me now, buy me now, buy me now. <laughs> you know, that's when a business has a really good analytics platform and have really used their data appropriately. A lot of people don't do that. The likes of banks can do the same thing. They can absolutely look at how many transactions, where are the places that you're often buying from and create value from that standpoint. Maybe sell you a card, a MasterCard or a debit card or whatever it is that can help you make those purchases much easier than you normally do. So that's when data analytics is fully integrated. And like I always say, have a data, uh, a digital strategy. A lot of people are only playing on tactics. Oh, let's create a social media platform. Everybody's creating that. That's a tactic. Mm -hmm. That's not a strategy. Oh, let's do email marketing. That's a tactic. That's not a strategy. An integrated customer journey as part of your plan, that's a strategy. And then you now use email marketing as part of your tactics. Social media, yeah, fantastic. Okay, what data am I gathering from these customers? That's a strategy. That's an evidence of a strategy. So I'm on social media 6 o'clock in the morning. I'm on social media 2 o'clock when they're on break, blah, blah, blah. All of that's a tactical approaches, but we all have to think about it. But I've mentioned all these big names, and some people who are small business owners might be thinking, ah, this is out of the league for me. This is only for big banks. No, absolutely not. Facebook, Instagram, now when you have a business page, can tell you impressions. True. How many people have visited your sites today? Where are they coming from? Guess what? That's great information. When you're doing advertising on Instagram, guess where you should be targeting? your top countries, where they are visiting you the most. That's where you want to start from. Now, let's talk about people that do not sell goods but sell services. So, for example, someone like me, I don't sell goods per se, but mm -hmm. I sell services like I host events, mm -hmm. I do movies, and I know there mm -hmm. are many other people who that is their line. They're mm -hmm. not selling goods. They're selling services. How can you create value in a digital world? So, for someone like you, if you want to create value in a digital world, I think the core thing is being creative because you're in a creative industry. Um, there's this, um, I can't remember her name now. She, she is in Mali or something like that. She went to Covenant University, but she's big on social media now. I, I like something she does in that sense. Comedy in that sense, rather than doing anything else, what I do is I have myself speaking to myself. So I record myself in three different places. Was that Maraji? Maraji, that's yeah. her name. You know, and that in itself is like, okay, everybody else is doing their own stuff. Kenny is doing his, everybody is doing theirs, but she's also being creative in her own sphere. Does that make sense? Does. So for an event, you, you want to get more MC hosting, you can start creating content, getting engaging. The parts where you are funny when you're hosting events, get that recorded, post that, and create sort of content, creative content from that standpoint. Use really good camera. Use very good lighting every time you talk and be professional at it. You can stand out. Some people don't like those people that are overly professional. Some people like somebody that is raw. Do the same thing. Wow, very interesting. 
I know that you're very um, particular about sermons like, yeah. I call it a sermon <laughs> because you're like, you're like a preacher in this regard. This is a message you put out and mm -hmm. you constantly mm -hmm. make yourself available for mm -hmm. people to learn. Mm -hmm. I, I even feel like telling you, please, after the interview, don't go so that we can have a one-on-one <laughs> -on -one session. I can share up some sure. ideas. Mm -hmm. Beyond launching a platform, there's one thing I've, I I've learned today is having a target, you know, mm -hmm. understanding your strategy mm -hmm. more like. Mm -hmm. And I know you're giving these lectures very mm -hmm. soon mm -hmm. about yeah. everything in this regard. Absolutely. Tell us about it. So this year, what we've decided to do is we are just on the social media front that I was talking about earlier on. Um, the likes of some entertainers who have done fantastically well on social media, Kenny Black, Josh Too Funny, MC Abbey, the rest of them, they're going to have a panelist session. It's on Friday at the University of Lagos. They will have a panelist session where they actually talk about what they've done the likes of Laura Ikeji will be there, Anita Brown, Tanya Motayo, they would have their own panel session as well. And then, of course, I would share mine as well. So we have a few speakers, some from the UK, some from Nigeria, and then we have panelist session on Friday at the University of Lagos. It's 10 a.m. Um, and, you know, it's, it's going to be a fantastic time. So I'll get the opportunity to, again, share some of these things I do because I'm very passionate about people's businesses and progressing. And now, digital world has made it a level playing ground. Very true. You know, I am competing. Some, some people are coming to me to buy my products rather than go to big names that you will think of. That would never have happened before when there was no digital world. So digital world is fantastic. So let's create value, instant value, by honestly looking at, okay, what's our target audience and that strategy. So I look forward to sharing that as well, more of that on Friday. Very true. We look forward to hearing a lot of all that. In fact, I feel that this has been a very worthwhile lecture. Thank you. This is happening on Friday at Unilag, 10 yes, a.m. How can people get more information about this event? Um, just go on my social media platform, Still Dapper, that's S-T-I-L-L-D-A-P-P-E-R, Still Dapper, or just type my full name on Google, you'll find me somehow, some way you'll get the information on there. It's on own Shelley, uh platform as well. So you, you'll definitely find it. But the best way, go on my social media handle and connect with me. All right. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you can you. find out more information about the event happening on Friday at Unilag at 10 a.m. You can follow him on Instagram at Still Dapper to find out more information. I'll still remind you before the end of the show. I think it was a really, really eye-opening conversation. Thank and you. it's motivated me to, you know, there, there was an idea I had. And I, I'm mm -hmm. thinking of a different way to go about it okay. now. So thank you very much for coming and sharing thank with you. us. We wish you thank all the you. best with the event. Thank you very much. And we hope to see more people, more people like you yeah. being churned out from events like that. Because the truth is, you can't get to the whole world. Absolutely. But if you created more people mm -hmm. you know, who would pass across the same knowledge and mm -hmm. the same message, mm -hmm. then we'd be able to reach more people as well. Absolutely. So thank I you agree. for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.